guys and welcome to a new video. It's been ages since I last filmed a video. Um, I think I still have one line around somewhere that I filmed around Christmas time but I never uploaded it. Um, you might notice that I have a different background. All these lovely books. <laughs> I actually moved house so that's why I have been away from the internet for like two months. Um, I moved in with my brother or I didn't like exactly moved in. Um, I kind of like half live at home, half live here, but until now I'm mostly here and I have my own room with lovely bookcases where I can finally like have all my books everywhere and I have a huge window over there so I finally have natural light and I'm really really happy. <laughs> so I'm gonna do like a house tour or something soon but first uh, for this video I thought I would show you all the books that I bought at the book fair. Uh, Boekenfestijn, if you're Dutch. <laughs> it was in Utrecht, uh, I think like a week ago or something, and I went and I bought way too many books as usual. And I thought I'd show them to you. So the first book on my pal is, is immediately like an amazing book. It's incredibly shiny, so that's really cool. Um, it's my new game and it's called Fortunately The Milk. And I wasn't sure if I was gonna buy it. Um, I just, I saw it because it was shiny. I'm basically like a bird. I, I like shiny stuff. And um, I really love the guy who does these illustrations. I have like more books where he does the illustrations and I love them. They're always so interesting. His name is Chris Riddle. And you know Neil Gaiman is awesome. I thought, well, it's a kid's book, but I love kid's books. I'm just gonna buy it. Turns out it's hilarious. It's one of the funniest books I've read in a long time. It's especially hilarious if you read it out loud, like to kids, but also like to your brother or sister or your parents or something if you make like funny voices and read it out loud it's hilarious um it's basically about this guy uh, who forgot to buy milk for his kids breakfast so he goes to the corner shop but then he's gone for like three or four hours and when he gets back with the milk uh he explains that he's been kidnapped and he met this time traveling dinosaur and basically like this whole story of what happened and why he's late with the milk um it's hilarious and i definitely recommend it then i bought the book no and me by delphine something there's a sticker over it let's see delphine the vegan? The vegan? <laughs> I have no idea. I think this is originally French. Um, and I've known about this book for a while because uh, a friend of mine actually did the cover art for the Dutch version of this book. Um, so, you know, I had when I saw this title, I was like, oh, I think it's that book. And it was, but in English this time, because I'm horrible. I don't like reading Dutch books, um, even when they're originally Dutch. There are some exceptions, but most of them I just I don't like reading in Dutch. So um, I'm reading it right now. It's almost finished, and I really like it. It's about this uh, girl who's like I think she's 13 or something, and she's a genius basically. Um, and she befriends this other girl who's 18 and who lives on the streets. Uh, so she's homeless, and it's all about that, I guess. And so far, or at least I'm almost finished, but I really like it. Then we have Someday Angeline, which is kind of like a similar book. It's by Louis Segar or something. The author of the bestseller Halls. I've heard about that book, but I've never read it. Um, anyway, this is about a girl who's also uh, considered to be a genius because she remembers a lot of things from before she was born. Like she just knows things. So that's why people think she's a genius. And it's all about her and trying to, I don't know, I guess deal with life. And she makes a friend who loves, who likes making jokes. And I don't know, it's just a really sweet short story. And I definitely enjoyed it. I don't really want to say too much because I think I'll give everything away because it didn't have a lot of plot. But because it's really short, not because it's bad. But I definitely recommend it. And I bought four Hobbit books! Um, so they had a set of three for I think nine euros. Uh, the Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, the photo guide in Dutch, unfortunately. Uh, but it's mostly pictures, so that's okay. Um, they had The Hobbit, The Destination of Smog photo guide. And The Battle of Five Armies photo guide. And if you can see over here, I have like all these uh, books. These are all... Uh, Lord of the Rings, and then here you have Doctor Who, Narnia, Harry Potter, 
and a few others <laughs> my film books <laughs> and I really love them so I'm, I'm always looking for more uh, and I also have this one The Hobbit, The Desolation of Smog, uh, the film book so these are photo guides, they're smaller and this is like a really full-fledged film book and um, again it's Dutch which is kind of a shame but mostly I just look at the pictures anyway <laughs> I never really get around to reading them uh, which I do want to do, but like someday, I guess. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy with those. Okay, we have more books. Uh, Specimen Days, a novel by Michael Cunningham. I just, oh, it looks so pretty on camera as well. I just love this, that's so shiny and the rest is so black. I just love the cover again. Uh, shiny, so that called to me, but I think these were uh, short stories and you have like the same characters every time but in totally different settings like one setting is like in the past the other one is New York 150 years in the future so it's different settings same characters and I thought that would be extremely interesting my seal of the warm shadow of the apt by Adrian and I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that <laughs> Russian name <laughs> um, Oh, I love the cover. It's so beautiful. This is actually like part 10 of a series and I'm not allowed to buy part something anymore um, of series, but I actually have the first um, few books of this series, except I think the first one. I think I've like two through four or five, so uh, because it was really cheap and it was there and I already had some books on the series, I was allowed to buy it because I'm not... I'm not allowed to buy it like allowed um, to buy part something when I don't have part one or two because then I end up with like a hundred books that I can't read. <laughs> okay I'm gonna try and go through this a little bit faster. Uh, I have Magic which is an anthology edited by Sarah Brown and Gil McNeil which is basically just lots of short stories with a magical element and the foreword is by J.K. Rowling and I have this book Ben Okri uh, Mental Fight and I just again I loved the cover it's really short because it's actually a poetry bundle and I almost never buy poetry books and when I do they're usually like classics um, but I do really like poetry so I really want to give this a try and see if it's any good and I have Bestseller by Alessandro Galanzi, which is basically a book about someone who wants to write a book and wants to have it be a bestseller and I thought that was really interesting because I love writing. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know that I'm actually writing books myself. Not published, unfortunately, but you know, someday. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this seems really interesting to me. Then we have Fire by NG Sage and um, this is from the Septimus Heap books. Again, I love the cover um, and I love that hard copy. Although the Septimus Heap books actually have like this one version that's like ages old because I have it for, I think I've had it for like years and years. Um, but the paperbacks are like really nice to read for some reason, like really nice quality. They're, they're kind of loose, but I, I really <laughs> like them. Um, I don't have one here, they're still at my parents' house. But um, yeah, this is like part seven or something and I'm still missing like one or two books. But again, this was allowed because I do eventually want the entire series. We have Autodrome by Kim Lakin Smith. Uh, I just love the cover, it's kind of I know, a little bit steampunkish, I guess, and a little bit 20s. Um, and I really liked it, and basically I bought this one for the cover. I do that all the time. Um, it's about these futuristic races, um, and I don't really have a lot with, like races as in motor races. Uh, I don't really have a lot with motors, like that doesn't really mean a lot to me, <laughs> or cars or whatever. Um, I think I don't really have that's Dutch. Kept me to feel met. I'm not sure if that was correct English. I don't really have a lot with... That means that it's not your cup of tea, basically. Um, <laughs> but I think that was a literal Dutch translation, sorry. Um, anyway, but it did seem interesting and I read like the first page and I liked the writing style, so I am one day gonna read this. Then we have The Suspicions of Mr. Witcher. Uh, by... Whoa, there are a lot of names on this. Kate Summers Kill. It's basically just a detective story set in 1860s and I like detective stories especially like the more old-fashioned ones that kind of remind me of Sherlock Holmes so I hope this is gonna be one of them. Um, 
because a lot of modern detective stories have a lot of violence and gore in it and especially a lot of sexual violence and I don't like to read about that so I'm hoping this one is gonna be safe because usually when it takes place in like a really ye old times they usually don't really talk about that stuff so it's usually less violent so let's hope this one is less fun too. <laughs> we have Nightly and Sun by Rohan Gavin. Oh, it's so cool. He's called Rohan. My cat is called Rohan. Love the Rain's World. Anyway, <laughs> this is basically, um, again, a detective agency, but then the son, who I think is 13 or something, does it say? Yes, a 13 year old. He's perfectly ordinary, 13 year old. But then he um, has to help with a case because somehow he can really help and he's needed. And then basically he goes into business, like the family business of detecting. <laughs> and I love detective books, especially kids versions of detective books. So I thought this would be really interesting. Also about Earthfall. The battle starts here by Mark Walden, which is basically um, a, a bit of a dystopian book, I think. Um, basically there was an alien invasion and <laughs> this is all about that. I think it even starts, um, like even the, the, this made me buy it, like the bit about the author is also part of the story because it says, uh, Mark Walden is the author of Earthfall. He was one of the few who saw the danger coming. <laughs> With a small group of her sisters, he's able to document events and send them via simulated wormhole to present-day Earth. Oh, that's cool. So basically, I forgot about that. I did read it. <laughs> uh, basically, it's a warning of what's to come. So I thought that was really interesting and I can't wait to read it. But yes, there is more. <laughs> I also have this book, uh, Stravaganza City of Flowers by Mary Hoffman. Again, I really like the cover and I'm a sucker for heart back copies. Um, I have part one of this and this is part two. I've never read part one, but I did recently find it again in one of my move-in boxes uh, because all the books you see behind me here, and there, there are more over there, <laughs> um, is only a fraction of my book collection. Uh, I have like a ton of boxes here in the attic still filled with books. I have a ton of boxes downstairs that I still have to open. There are a few in my brother's room and then my room back home is still completely as I left it covered in books. <laughs> so yeah I, I do have a problem I think. But that problem didn't stop me from buying more books. <laughs> uh, Reefer's Ransom by Emily Diamond. I really like this cover because this is actually open so it's a hole and then here you have the entire art of the sea. Uh, basically, um, I think they like capture the princess or something. Um, okay, so there are bloodthirsty reavers who kidnap the prime minister's daughter. And then the main character, uh, Lily, she her village is blamed for the capture because apparently she was probably nearby or something and they should have been watching out for her. Um, and she wants to go find the kidnapped girl uh, to restore honor to her village. So I thought that was really interesting. I have this book, Shake. I just, again, I love the cover. It's so 60s, 70s. I really liked it. Uh, by Yvonne Roberts. Oh, it's in the 60s, Wales. And it's basically just about, I don't know, like girls in the 60s. And uh, like one of them is a real, <laughs> really a feminist in a time when it wasn't really a thing yet. Or at least like, it, of course it was a thing, but like, you know, women didn't have a lot of rights back then compared to now. <laughs> And even if they officially had them, like, yeah, you know how it was. And I just thought that would be really interesting to read about. And have we're all in this together. <laughs> Owen Kin. Um, I was really hesitating about this book. It's kind of thin. Um, and you see, like, famous pictures in the front. Um, I think it's, like, a bit about communism and stuff and fascism and I don't know. It, I wasn't really sure about it, I'm still not really sure, but as soon as I read it, I'll let you know what it's actually about and if it was any good. And the last book, um, I have more, but like the last novel, <laughs> um, Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. Uh, my dad actually recommended this to me because um, it's kind of like, he said it was kind of like Jane austen -y and I love Jane Austen's books, so I love books set in a time as well. Uh, I think this is just from someone who lived around the same time, who also wrote books. Um, I've never heard of her, Elizabeth Caskell. I'm sorry, but I am gonna read it. And judging by the cover, there is a BBC series of it already. So after I read it, I'm gonna watch that. 
probably, but most likely. And about one whole manga, um, Lizzie Newton, Victoria Mysteries. I didn't bring like my list of all the manga that I had, so I have no idea if I have this already. But this series does seem really interesting, uh, and I really like the drawing, so I just bought it hoping that I don't have it yet, because it was 4 euros. It used to be 2 euros there, and then like the fifth one for free. But yeah, the book fair has gotten pretty expensive. Okay, next up we have some cooking books. I have Japanese and Korean cooking. It's like really short with just a few recipes in it. It was only a euro. And this was uh, buy three, get one free. Uh, so I also have Chinese cooking and muffins, scones and cakes. Because <laughs> I do want to like experiment more in the kitchen and we cook our own meals now. Not every day, but almost every day or we eat parents but yeah so I thought those would be really handy I also bought this book elegant cupcakes by the cookies fairy <laughs> which is the cookie fairy <laughs> apparently that's a thing um, I just thought this looked really cute I've been baking a lot recently of like housewarming parties and stuff and this has just a lot of decoration ideas for cupcakes so I'm gonna try these out very soon then I have fun cooking macaroons and petit fours um, I actually made some petit fours recently, but I didn't use this book. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, so it's a <laughs> it's a thin book, and um, again, not too expensive. It was three euros, and I think this one was this one was four euros, so it's not too bad. Um, and I'm gonna wanna try these out. I actually really like the idea of having a high tea party. So I'm probably gonna like experiment with these and when I can make all of them, I'm gonna make a huge high tea party and invite my friends. <laughs> then last book that was really cheap for like the size and the quality. It was four euros and it's, um, it's Dutch, but it says like one dough, a hundred cookies. So it's basically like one basic cookie dough recipe and then all these different kinds of cookies that you can make with them and I thought that was really fun and interesting and I also love making cookies so I'm gonna use this a lot probably. So these were all the books that I bought at the book fair. Um, I will try to make more videos like more than once every three months. Um, I do have like a wonderful setting now. Uh, I just don't have a chair. I'm actually sitting like on a tiny little stool on the ground because <laughs> I tried to get my chair in here but my door doesn't open all the way because this bookcase is in front of it and that means that I couldn't get the chair in. What was I saying? I had a point with all that. Oh yeah, that I have a setup now, so I'm gonna try to make more videos more regularly. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this. Let me know what you thought about the books, if you've read any of them. And I will see you soon with another video. Bye!